If this looks familiar to you, then you've experienced the dreaded quota limit issue in Looker Studio with GA4 data. We're going to talk about how to get around that with the Extract Data Connector. Uh, a couple key benefits of the Extract Data Connector are because it only pulls data once per day, it avoids those quota limits and uh, does tend to make your dashboards much faster. We'll also talk about some uh, gotchas and downsides of the Extract Data Connector. And then we'll go through some best practices when you're when you are using it. So let's have a look. Okay, so first let's deconstruct what's going on here. We have here's the the tab. I'm now in edit mode, and you can see this quota error message. This data set has been accessed too many times, um, and we have see details here. This is pretty unsatisfying. We click on this. So it says that we've used too many requests in the last hour. Click here to learn more about quota usage. All right, well, so let me show you something super interesting. Uh, if you if you right click on any of these uh, widgets or, or, or charts that's hit the, the limit, in, on here it says Google Analytics token usage and you can actually break down specifically where your problem is. So here it says per project per hour. So this dashboard being a project, the, the, the quota limit applies per property and the remaining tokens is zero. I, I've only used, it says, the on the I only have this one page up and and I've only used 619 tokens I, I don't think that's actually above the limit so let's have a look I, I pulled up Google's page about quotas and I'll, I'll pop a, a, a link on the screen here to this page so the one that I think I exceeded is this core concurrent request per property and What's curious about that is that in a dashboard, these each each of these elements on this page, these are all connecting to GA4, and each one constitutes an API connection. And and the concurrent number is actually only ten. So I know I've run into that one before. Uh, in any case, you can sort of start to break things down, but we're here to talk about how to get around this using extract data. So let's have a look at that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy this tab. So now what I'm going to do is create a data source and we'll compare. And because I want to show you how you get more speed and interestingly, look at how this is funny. This is kind of how this API limit works. It's like now I'm getting like some are coming up, some aren't. Pretty annoying. Uh, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these, these widgets down, uh, and these scorecards. Oh, one thing just to be aware of is even these dropdown controls count as API connections because they're they're um, being used to filter GA. I mean, they are connected to GA4 and, and being used to filter GA4 data. Okay, so I, I did a little bit of reorganizing the dashboard, make it, um, I don't know, a little easier to see what's going on. And what we're going to do right now, these are all connecting to GA4, but what I'm going to do is switch the bottom ones to use the extract data connector. So we're going to go ahead and go up here. Um, we can actually, we can do this, um, add data. So pull it up and we'll click extract data. So with extract data, we can select uh, any data source that we've added to the dashboard. So I'm going to show you for for using it for GA4, but it is actually handy uh, with any data source and will make your dashboards faster. And in the I'll highlight a, a downside of extract data is that you can schedule it to run once a day, but it's not therefore is not great for like real time data. So if you have a data source that's updating throughout the day and you want to be able to see um, at a given time of day where things are at, not good for that. The thing with J4 is that J4 data does not update that often anyway. So I generally advise people not to trust same day data 
at all. Um, I see, you know, even when data shows up, it's not going to, it's certainly not going to be real, anything close to real time. So we're going to pick GA4. Now we're just going to, we're using it. Uh, what we're going to do is say exactly what we want to pull in. Now, okay, so here's one of the big gotchas I wanted to highlight for you is this event name. Bad idea to pull it in, in my experience. Um, the main reason to pull it in is to use it to filter um, on event name, or at least that's the main reason you, reason I pull an event name um, or use event name in, in a dashboard. And what I found is when you filter an event name, things go kerflooey. And and even just actually having it in the data, I found um, I've compared and and um, it can can mess with with uh, metric values. So we're going to get rid of that. Then uh, in my dashboard. I had um, uh, in the in the table I had uh, source and medium session source and medium and I have a filter for channel grouping. So I'm going to grab medium and I will grab session default channel grouping. So those are the dimensions that were on that tab. So then we're going to go and add metrics. One thing that I have found and I would recommend is that you don't you you don't try to create an extract data connector that can cover sort of all of your needs in a given dashboard. In general, where I found that the extract data connector metric values vary the most is when I start combining too many dimensions. So if I have like one report where I want to report on things um, it's obviously things like uh, user scope dimensions are, are, are not going to be compatible with session scope dimensions, but I don't know, even like geographic dimensions um, with uh, source dimensions, like there, I, I've just found a number of, of dimension incompatibilities. So what I try to do is create different extract data connectors for the different things, stories I'm going to be telling in a dashboard. We're going to pull in a bunch here um, so we can pull them into the widgets. But in general, what I advise is to think about sort of what's the least number of um, dimensions and metrics you can use. OK, so we're going to pull these dimensions and all these metrics in. And then the other thing about extract data is that um, we can so so uh, we can schedule it to, to run every day and and you're pretty much always going to want to do this. I mean, there may be a circumstance where you have static data or just for testing. I don't know. Um, really, it doesn't actually matter while you're testing. It's only going to extract it once per day anyway. So I'm going to whatever, say 8 a.m. Now, one thing to keep in mind that concurrent requests like if you ended up with many instances of extract data running, you're going to want to start them at different times so that they don't run into that concurrent requests um, issue. And uh, the last thing that I need to do here is say the date range. And this one's a little tricky. I mean, this, you know, you'll use tokens when this runs and running like a longer date range will use more tokens. So if you run into circumstances where um, you're uh, even with extract data, you're running into that limit, you may be pulling too long a date range. For most websites, I don't think this is an issue. Um, for the purposes of demonstration right now, let's, well, I'm going to go back and pick, um, let's say, December 1st. Uh, and then here we're going to say, okay, I'm going to go to advanced. And so we're going to go from December 1st, for example, this is the way that, that I prefer to do it. Um, on this side, we're going to change this from fixed. We're going to say today minus one day and apply that. And then, uh, we can't <laughs> weirdly, I'm going to have to come back and name it later. OK, so now what we're going to do is to switch each of the filter controls and scorecards in the bottom to use the extract data connector we just created. So click on these. 
and switch that over to extract data. And as long as the dimensions and metrics are the same. So this one's actually interesting. I, this is actually a calculated field. Um, little bonus, I'll show you how we can do that. So first we're gonna switch this to extract data. And then the control field here, we're actually gonna create a field and we're gonna call this session source medium. We're gonna do this, uh, concat, and we're gonna do session source, comma, and double quote space slash double quotes, comma, session medium. that pretty cool huh um, I don't know why Google doesn't include that as a dimension in Booker Studio so I'm not gonna make you watch me switch each of these we'll skip forward mm, that's a little concerning let's um oh this is great I'm actually glad I did this so uh, this is this is really valuable for you. So what I forgot to do is include date in my. Um, uh, it's just you might have noticed it while I was setting it up, but um, easy mistake to make. So we'll change, add this date here, and we have to save and extract again. Close out. And then here we want to add date as a control field. Interestingly, these are not populating. Okay, so I've, I've changed these all over and a couple of interesting things. Um, this one's pretty straightforward. The, the, we just need to change this to be a percent metric. Not a big deal. Um, but also notice how it's summing which is odd. So now when we change it to an average, it's similar. So, so there's a couple really interesting things going on. Sessions is slightly different. Google actually says that the session metric in J4 is an estimated metric, which is a little baffling. Um, the total users is a bit different between extract data and the J4 connector, but a lot of these are the same. So new users are the same. Engagement rate is really similar, but not quite the same. But I, it's just it's a little baffling. This events per session is also summing most likely. So we're going to change that to an average. So you can see there are some things that have discrepancies, some things that don't. So my advice here would be that in some cases you might let feel like it falls within an acceptable range, but always compare it to uh, GA4. So for example, the sessions metric to me, Google's calling it an estimate anyway. Like they're not actually showing you the number of sessions, they're showing you an estimated number of sessions. So the fact that we're off a little around 0.2 um, percent difference, like I can totally live with that. So you just you want to compare uh, metric by metric when you do use extract data. The other thing that I would advise is when you're when you're setting it up, try removing dimensions because sometimes what I've found is combining two dimensions can um, make uh, metrics go pretty far off. Uh, and that little um, catch uh, with aggregation that a lot of times metrics that should be um, showing as averages are showing as some values. So there it is. The last thing I want to show you is let's um, let's go ahead and refresh data here and see. So look at how fast the extract data connector came up. And, and it'll pretty much always come up that fast, whereas you'll see the J4 connector came up relatively fast for J4 connectors. I mean, for when you're using the J4 connector, I don't know, let's just, we'll do that one more time just so you get to see. So here we have it. I, you know, 
I'm not going to say it's a great solution. I'm in the process of, of working on converting some of my dashboards to using BigQuery um, to get around the quote out limits. There are a number of third party connectors. Um, Analytics Canvas uh, does a good job pulling in GA4 data um, and can get you around quota issues, supermetrics. Um, funnel. So, th so there are a number of those third third party connectors. Uh, I think you pretty much have to pay for all of them, but mostly not um, super expensive. Note that if you're thinking about a third party connector because you want data to match what you see in the GA4 web interface, I wouldn't get your hopes up because these problems really have to do more with the underlying data and what's available via the API. Google doesn't disclose how some of these metrics are calculated. And I haven't found that any source that draws on API data matches GA4 exactly. So in summary, those best practices are only include the dimensions and metrics you need in the extract data connector. This will probably mean you mean need more than one per dashboard. Compare metric values to GA4. Sometimes you're going to see that they are too different from GA4, and you're going to want to go back to using the GA4 um, direct connector. And in my experience, avoid pulling in event name. Um, tempting to use it to pull it in for, for using in filters, but um, for that one, I've I, I really had a lot of problems with. So. Hope that helps and thanks for watching.